bring the Park and Recreation Committee meeting to order. We have a quorum present, and I'm going to open the uh, council chambers for public comment or suggestions. Do we have anyone out there that has some suggestions or comments that they would like to talk about? All right, then I'm going to move on. I'm looking for a motion to approve the minutes from our November 7th meeting. Motion by Watson and a second by Lukens. All in favor? Aye. Motion passed. Number four on the agenda, discussion and possible action approving the installation of infield synthetic turf at Athletic Park. I'm going to turn that over to Jamie. All right, thank you. There we go. Okay. Now it's working. All right. Um, thank you, committee members. So we're here tonight. I have a um, pretty long explanation in your packet for you. I know you can't read all of this, but it was in the, the um, agenda summary for today of what we're here asking for. Um, and we do have representatives from the Woodchucks organization. Um, Mark McDonald and Ryan Troy are here to discuss this as well. So I'm going to let them do some of the talking. Um, to explain kind of why we're here today too. Uh, the biggest part is that they are, are looking to bring a women's softball team here to town um, starting in the summer of 2024. And with that comes um, a lot of opportunities for the woodchucks themselves, but also for the, the park. And one of those uh, changes that is required though of that to make athletic park into a multi-use facility is changing the infield from grass to athletic or artificial turf, which is the AstroTurf, um, just because right now it's a grass infield, it's a baseball field, it is not a softball field. Softball fields are typically um, dirt infields, um, so it's not a multi-use facility at this time. So there's a number of things that go along with it. Um, I'm going to ask Mark to come up and talk a little bit about the softball first um, and what that means to the organization, what it might mean to the city, and then we can get into what those changes uh, our requests are. Yeah, is this, oh, he's on. Yes, okay. Yeah, um, this would really be unique, and I think it would be um, nice for Wausau and the image. It would, you know, bring us, you know, present us as a really progressive and forward thinking community. Um, you go out throughout the Midwest, and I, I um, and you're not going to find um, collegiate softball team like what we're, we're proposing here. Um, basically, if you think of the Woodchucks, just think of them with softball. It's the basic, mm -hmm. the same thing. And so women college athletes will get the same opportunity that the men will. Um, what's, um, and I think it's what's interesting about it is that um, if you know anything about college softball right now, the College World Series softball, Division I softball tournament, actually outdraws the men's baseball, um, not just in attendance, but also in viewership. Um, last season, um, I think it was about 10 of our, our Woodchuck games were on ESPN. That was a nice thing for giving us some national exposure. Um, but ESPN is really interested in this, and they really want to broadcast this because it's just um, a very popular sport right now. Um, I should say that I kind of messed up here, and I don't want to – it's not really a minor league. Uh, we run it like the minor leagues, and if you know anything about what's going on in in the minor leagues right now, the 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 uh, the, the the blur between collegiate summer league and, and minor leagues is is not very, but it's run it's run like a minor league team, um, and uh, so um, anyway, that's kind of yeah. I, I think it'd be very interesting and, and very and very and, and very um, for for Wausau. So, so what it requires then um, to bring them here is there's a couple of things um, because we need the facilities for that. So the, the biggest thing is the infield part of the field. So the proposal is from the Woodchucks organization is to replace the infield and the foul territory lines of the infield as these, this AstroTurf. And then anything from the infield out would be the grass um, and continue to be the grass. We'd have the the 
stone um, warning track around the outsides. We need to keep that for our maintenance purposes of, of getting equipment in there to address the lights and the boards and that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> so that, that's the biggest proposal. Then along in the AstroTurf, um, in the proposal you see in your packet from um, Mark and, and the organization is that the AstroTurf would have a number of different um, mounds and bases on it to accommodate multi-levels of, of play, whether it's um, the youth, the collegiate, or the high school, right? Um, so it's not just that baseball, softball would play on it. That was another really a big part of this is that softball is what's driving this and the need for it or the request for it. But when we look for it, we need to look at all of our users of athletic parks. So in addition to the woodchucks, we also have the area high schools, um, which is Wassa, Mosini, Newman. And then um, we have Wassa Youth Baseball uses it quite frequently, and the Legion is probably, I guess, our second biggest user yes. of Athletic Park. Um, so those are all different levels of play with all different needs for that. It would have a portable mound that would be brought out for baseball, but it would be able to be used for any softball. Um, currently, our youth softball obviously doesn't use it because it's not a softball field, so this would even provide the opportunity for our youth softball to come like our youth baseball does and do a championship game here or there and give the exposure um, to the girls to play in a larger, really cool stadium like the boys get to do. Um, so the um, AstroTurf, in addition to it, so Athletic Park right now, we, just like our sports complex, are very picky about when we open it and when we and how much use we have on it um, because we want to keep it pristine for the, the user groups that use it, but also you know, it takes a lot of wear and tear and takes some time to do it. So it doesn't necessarily open very early in the spring. Part of that because um, the wetness sometimes, uh, you know, depending upon how wet of spring we have. Others is just when we can get our bathrooms up and running and the water turned on because we don't want any of the pipes to freeze. And then another part of it is our staffing, which no matter what will continue to be an issue. So we have to look at what that future staffing, if we're able to open early or not, will be. But having AstroTurf on the field would, would allow us to have games possibly earlier in the season um, and take away that wetness side of it. Doesn't necessarily take away the bathrooms and the staffing side, but we can work through that. Um, it also has the ability to play multiple games in a day unless we're in tear. We do have double headers now. We typically don't, though, have double headers of different organizations, correct? It's just. But there's no reason we couldn't do that. Right. Yeah, it's no reason at all. Right. Yeah. Um, so right now, in the last year, we had, I know we didn't play this many games, but on our schedule, we had 72 games on 52 different days. Some of those didn't take place. Um, but in general, that was kind of what was scheduled as the hopes to do all of those games. Um, that is some double headers. I don't know if there was any triple headers on there from Legion or not, but probably just double, mostly. Mostly doubles, yeah. I, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. It's usually a juniors and seniors, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um... Those are the couple of things, and then on, on your packet, you can see some of the other um, items there of, of why we could have athletic or AstroTurf within Athletic Park. Um, potential cost savings with maintenance, although there is still maintenance required with it. It's mm -hmm. not just put it in and forget it. There is a piece of equipment that would come along with it that would be purchased with the field. Um, there would be some training on it. There would be, our staff would be needed, and I put this all in that. Um, right up in your packet too, our staff would still be needed to groom it um, after so many hours of play uh, to keep an eye on it. And then garbage probably is the biggest thing is we'll have to do that regularly. Um, it would come with some restrictions of not allowing our users to um, have gum and sunflower seeds and metal cleats. Um, so there's going to be some changes to that. But when I talk about those other users, kind of going back to that, um, we do, we, because we have all those other users, I did reach out to every one of those organizations mm -hmm. to ask and let them know of this proposal and ask what their thoughts are. I included everybody's response I got back in your packet as well. Um, so you could see that they were all in support of it. The only one team you know, said that there would be some adjustment not allowing the, the sunflower seeds and the gum. But as far as play goes, they had no issue with it and they had support of it. Um, our WASA school district is continuing to move forward with their uh, turf infields for their baseball and softball. I got confirmation from Dr. Hiltz this morning on that. Um, so our high schools 
will use their own fields mostly, but they do still every once in a while like to use Athletic Park. I know the East-West game would still like to be played at Athletic Park on that neutral kind of ground. Um, so they are in support of it as well. Um, in long range, uh, the, that's the unknown, is the long-term replacement cost of the turf. In many cases, we are not considered a high use, and, and Mark and Ryan can maybe speak to this a little bit more too, is we are not considered a high use facility um, in the standards of what they consider for the length of the time that this turf, uh, the life of it. So the 10 to 12 years, we will probably get more years out of that if we maintain the turf correctly, which we have every intention to do. Um, there are certain spots that would be would be rotated out on a more frequent ba basis, like your batter's boxes, your pitcher's mound, maybe, and your first base um, area. And this is going to come with some replacement pieces, is what I understood. Yes. Um, so that's kind of a gist of the, the turf. Um, this is the only turf facility that the city would have. Um, right now, the only turf in the area is DC Everest has a football field. Um, Mosinee has a couple of baseball or a softball ba one. One baseball. One baseball well, field. It's a little field too. Yeah. So there's not very many, and then there are some more coming, as I mentioned. So um, if this happened, it would take place at the end of this next 2023 season. That it would go in for the potential start of the women's uh, league to start the beginning of June or maybe even a little bit earlier in 2024. They have 40 game season, 20 would be home, 20 would be away. They would potentially play when the Woodchucks are on the road. Um, and that's where I gave Mark the schedule of what we had on the books this year and I asked him to say, would, your, would the women's team be able to fit in within the schedule? Are we displacing anybody? Um, and that was also in that email chain of how it would impact. Um, it looks like it would fit as would be. There would be a couple of changes with some Legion games, which they are aware of and they are in support of. Um, so it would fit within our current schedule. Um, and then also coming with it, we would need to negotiate a use agreement because that would be a separate organization, just like we have with the Woodchucks, so I don't see a problem with that. And then there's a potential for the developer's agreement, so there's an update going to environment, or not environmental, um, economic development tomorrow, yes. I believe. Um, and then we'll kind of see what comes out of, we wanted to see what comes out of this committee and goes to city council for this approval first before we determine, you know, what moves forward on that. So also in your packets, um, I did include, we did reach out. Um, I know that you received the email today from Alder Lukens about the uh, environmental side of it. Well, a lot of different issues um, that have been researched with turf. Um, I had already been aware of the a PFAS discussion, so um, I had reached out to Ryan and he reached out to the um, manufacturer of this. They did provide a statement that I included in your packet as well. Um, and they, I guess I could zoom in, this is not easy to see on here, but they do not use it for manufacturing. You know, it is a environmental uh, thing that is out there, so they can't guarantee that there won't be a trace of it um, when tested, but it, they say here it is not used in this system. Um, I will let you, Mark, talk about why this system, because you're very particular about this system, right? Okay, yeah. Um, well, yeah. actually, yeah, there's a lot of things there. So um, we're interested in turf because it allows us to do softball. But the AstroTurf, which we're proposing to bring in, brings other benefits too. And I think the biggest benefit is that you can use the field more. Um, you know, it turns over a lot quicker from game to game. There's not all the work that needs to be done in terms of rebuilding mounds and rebuilding batter boxes and putting down lines. You basically just, just one team comes off, another team comes on, and you just play. The other thing that's nice, and especially for me, because I've pulled way too many tarps in my life at my age, um, <laughs> is that when it rains, um, you put a tarp on the mound, you put a tarp on home plate, but when it's done raining, you just pull the tarps, make sure it's dry, um, and go. You don't have that hour-long process where you're kind of working the field over and everything like that. And as much as that'll be nice for the woodchucks, because we'll be able to get going right away, um, probably the biggest thing we'll have to worry about is warming up the players. For the outside users, it'll have a lot of benefit because they can't pull tarp. Mm. They don't pull tarp 
um, we have 35 ball players and 20 interns. So when we need to pull tarp, we have lots of young bodies to kind of get out there and do it. But uh, for some reason, the outside users just don't have the, the, the people to get it done. So um, I think you'll see Athletic Park is a beautiful facility. Um, and by doing this, we'll allow it to be used more. It's, it's really only used 36 nights a year, you know, in any kind of size. And I think by, by, by bringing in turf, it'll do the other. Um, the outside users, which you mentioned there, yeah, I, I know them all. I work with them all very well. You know, as a matter of fact, I'm the guy, my, my foundation is the one that gives them the money to pay the fees so they can play on the field. Now, I don't want to be, seem too altruistic here because if I went away, it's not a lot of money. It's like $5,000 or, you know, they each raise, but they could find that at another foundation around town here too. But I, I do really get a kick out of watching the kids play on the field. It's important to me. And, you know, I, I think it's actually it's good for the community and it's their asset. It, this is, I don't own Athletic Park. You guys do. And so, or the city does and the, the community does and everything like that. So I, it's in my best interest. And if you do the math, the Woodchucks will be on the road for 36 games. They have two off days every summer. They have a three-game All-Star break. So you got 41 days, days when they're not even at the stadium. Uh, you know, I think we can get in 20 softball games and easily get in the outside users. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, Jamie and I have some ideas on that too. Mm -hmm. um, we also have some ideas on a long-term cost, which we can talk about if you want to. Mm -hmm. I think the 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 one thing with the PIFAs. Um, I'm not a PIFA expert. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you I am. I don't know a lot about it. You know, I know I would, you know, I could I could read and study for a while. I still probably know enough to be dangerous. Um, and uh, but I know that to simplify it for me, the manufacturer here, and we're talking about astroturf. We're not talking about field turf. So we're bringing in the good stuff. We're not. We're bringing in the stuff that everybody wants. And Ryan actually has copies of some of the stuff if you want to see it. Um, uh, or uh, samples of it, but um, the manufacturer will certify, give us a certified letter that they do not use any PFAS in their manufacturing process or in their installation process. Now, it doesn't mean that you are gonna, aren't going to be able to go out there and test because rainwater has PFAS in it, and so you're going to find it. It's it's out there, um, I've, and uh, and so. For me, that's where I get my comfort. Can you speak to um, what you feel for safety of your players on turf? Well, okay, so this is baseball. It's not football or, or soccer. So you don't have, you know, players being slammed to the ground by another player. And so you don't really, that's not the kind of sport it is. Um, and so you don't get concussions in baseball like you get in other sports. I'm not saying they don't happen, but really in baseball where they happen is when you get a 90 mile hour fastball to the side of the head. That's where you get your concussions. Um, every now and then there's a player that will, you know, dive for a ball and maybe land awkwardly or, and, or funny. And usually it's when they're backpedaling, believe it or not, that hit their head. But that's a real rare situation and it's not that. Um, as for the, you know, the field and the cutting, um, it's, it's, it really doesn't, I don't, we haven't found any studies which say that, you know, uh, in terms of knee injuries or something like that is, is greater on turf than it is on, on, uh, on grass. Or baseball. Or baseball. Or baseball. Excuse me. Yeah, for, yeah. Base, for baseball. Yeah, I mean. And know. do your players currently play on synthetic turf fields other places? Pretty much every northern team has to play on turf or they're not going to play. Okay. Yeah, and so every, everybody north. Now, you know, if we get somebody from Mississippi State or Florida, University of Florida, yeah, they, they, they play on grass. But um, if, you're, if you're north, uh, you're, in a, you're in a northern climate, you pretty much have to play baseball on, on, um, on, gra on, on turf. Here's the clients that currently use their fields. Yeah, so, <coughs> yeah, there's, it's, I can sh I'm just going to show you what it looks like from here so you can see that it's all the big Division One colleges that use, that, that use turf. Yes, for sure. Um, the other thing that comes that will be just a future discussion with the, the softball coming, um, if this is something that moves forward and it gets approved, is eventually the, um, the um, I always forget the name, the locker room area. Yeah, the clubhouse. The, the clubhouse. clubhouse. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I, it's right at the top of my head. The clubhouse. Um, 
Well, right now we know our current clubhouse at Athletic Park, it needs some work. It's been a, it's going to be on our CIP program. It's been on our CIP program. We've got some areas identified that we need some improvements, roofing, ADA accessibility, stuff like that. So we're going to have to address that. That'll be coming forward more as, um, as we get into our next budget cycle. But then as we move forward, if the women's softball team is here, we probably want a separate clubhouse for them. In the meantime, though, they could potentially use the current clubhouse and they move in when the boys move out or the men move out and then the men move in when the women move out and they just basically kind of take their stuff back and forth. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's got to be equal. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and that's the important thing here to understand that, you know, they're, they're you know, worthy of just as nice a facility as the men. Mm -hmm. And so there's no reason why you have a men's clubhouse but not a women's. And so we, we would, we, we have some ideas and there's some things possibly could do, but they're longer term out there. And so we might have to be in and out for the first year. But it even relates to the field because, you know, one of the things somebody may say is, why don't you just go out to Sunnyville and play? Well, Sunnyville ain't athletic park. It's nice facility and everything. And I, I'm not going to say it's, it's great, but you know, it, it's it's not the same thing, no. and and uh, and and the, and an athletic park we we've worked on for years to make it special, and we want it to be special for the kids that play there too. Mark, did you say that you had samples of the astroturf? And I don't know if you know the difference between astroturf and field turf. I do not, and that's why I was interested. It's a name brand. It's a name brand is what it is, but oh, okay. Um, of the two, um, I mean. It, Field turf is kind of the cheaper version, and natural turf is is the higher quality of the two. It looks more like real glass. It feels more like real grass and everything like that. Um, Jamie talked about um, maintenance, and so what'll happen? You know, in baseball, it's different from other sports because the wear and tear um, comes in certain patches. So home plate, obviously, where you're digging into the batter box, the pitcher's mound, first base, the baselines, and everything like that. So what you have here is, that, you know, when we buy it, not only do we get the machine that helps us take care of it, which will be nice too, but you get replacement panels. And so over at first base, when it starts to wear out, you rip out the panel, you put in a new one. Okay. And so that's that's the wear and tear that you get. That's what makes um, baseball, you know, that's sort of it's different from... from Lou, bring it this way. Oh, well, we'll bring it to Don. I can pass it. Thank you. Okay, what is the top one? Go ahead. What did he say? Which, what is this? Well, it's all smart. It's smart. <coughs> so in what way is it better, would you say? Like you said, qu higher quality. Do you know what? I think the athletes that play on it feel mm -hmm. that it it act, it feels more like real gla real grass. Mm -hmm. It's um, got better bounces. Um, it gives a little bit more than field turf. Um, and so, the, yeah, am I right there? Mm -hmm. Ryan's more of an expert on this. Okay. I'm an expert by no means. So inside the the um, the system they call it, um, there's roots that hold that hold the fibers in better. And then there's an infill mitch, which used to be those rubber beads, mm -hmm. is now is an organic material that they put in that actually holds inside the root of that stuff. And so each one of those is at different levels. Like the dark one is for home plate. And then there's the green ones, the infill grass, and then there's a lighter color brown for the infield. And every mm -hmm. system, when they put it in, they put the infield mix in, and they actually come out and test it to see what the spin rate is of the ball. And, it's supposed to be 2.1 seconds from the shortstop to get the ball and to throw it to first. So they can test that all. And so this program alone, this diamond series they call it, um, has been tested and utilized in most of the Division I baseball teams now. They've gone, you know, the field turf is just another company that is not used anymore. So does this not use any rubber infill at all? Uh, there's different materials. Um, so the old days was recycled rubber pellets, basically, is probably the best way to describe it. And yes, you can still buy those, but there's the one we're proposing is a silicon, silicone sand that they put in. It's actually a sand material. Mm -hmm. There's other ones that are put in that are um, 
organic material made out of a pine tree down south that they grind up yep. and they put it into those pellets. I included in your packet the maintenance manual, and so yes. this is a little bit of some of those organic materials there. In yeah, there. and I think there's more too now mm -hmm. from their up. I, I, I was looking because there's now another one that that helps reduce the the heat as well too mm -hmm. in it. So, so those are some of my concerns. If I could ask a few more questions. Certainly. So um, <coughs> it's not just a PFAS. My concerns. So how how large of an area would it be in the infield? So I think the quote is thirty two thousand square feet is what the infield is, and then add the warning track. Add the warning, the warning track areas. The whole infield, the whole field would be one hundred twelve thousand square feet, and that would include your bullpen mounds, warning track, and then just for the infield, it's thirty five thousand square feet. Okay. So um, my concern, and the reason I sent that, is um, I know that artificial turf is the thing um, spreading throughout, has spread throughout. Um, and, and I'm all for a women's softball team, definitely. Yeah. But, um, you know, I'm really, I'm really cautious because I feel like sports often, I mean, I know it's important, and it's important for our children, but so is our environment. So it's not only the PFAS, but it's the amount of waste that ends up in our landfills with the, with the, the other materials and the other materials that are part of it. And so I, I understand, because I've read a lot on this, and I understand the, um, you know, the wanting to be able to have a longer year. The Iwasa School District, by the way, yes, I had checked with Dr. Hiltz too, and yes, they will be presenting it. It has not been approved yet, but they will be presenting it to the board. Um, so it's not, they're moving ahead with the design. Mm -hmm. um, I have been contacted by residents that have concerns with artificial turf. So. Um, I guess, you know, the, what I also came across is that the industry has said it at other, you know, in other places that, yes, it's free from it. And I also understand PFAS is in, in rainwater. But, you know, at the same time, the industry is out to sell a product. And so... Um, you know, my concern is also for the health of the community, and so I guess I'm, those are my concerns about this, and I'm, you know, I know that there are other ways, other, other um, mitigations besides artificial turf, and that have been used, that are being used, and so I guess, you know, does it have to be artificial turf for this softball, or could it be, um, you know, other natural mitigations? Because, right, there is maintenance and there's the heat. You know, it gets really hot um, during summer days. Um, so there are a whole number of things, and that's why I sent it on, just because those are some of my concerns that I had no idea about until I found, you know, I came across a PFAS issue, and then I started reading more about it, and the injuries, because I know soccer players that have gotten hurt from artificial turf. So, and not just, you know, whether it's AstroTurf, I get it, I get it, that it might feel better, but, or it may be higher quality, but it's still, there's a lot, there are a lot of commonalities, so, um, I guess I'd like to hear from some of the other members, and, and I'm unsure on this, so it's, I'm very much for what you wanna do, but my concern is the environmental, and when are we, you know, I would like to see this community put more of an emphasis on environment when it comes to sports, too. I understand we have, you know, uh, to compete, but also, what about public health? What about the environment? Those are my concerns. 
Um, I'm, I guess in terms of other alternatives, I think um, for baseball to so and softball to coexist in the same facility, which is what we want, because there's a lot of other things that come with Athletic Park that you can't recreate anywhere else. Um, the best alternative is AstroTurf. I mean, there is no. You can't play the game of softball on a baseball field. You, yeah, you can't play. You can't play softball on a baseball field. You could play baseball on a softball field if you strip the infield, which I think would. I mean, I, if if I'm going to get in trouble, I, <laughs> that I'm going to get really in a lot of trouble if I suggest that, because <laughs> from the b baseball people. Um, so you know, and and again, you know, back to the PFAs. I mean. We've got a manufacturer that's willing to send us a certified letter that says, and I, and I again, I, this is as simple as I can make it, that there's no PFAS in the manufacturing process or the installation process. That's, that's, I can't, I don't know what more I could ask for, you know, from that. And they've done studies, they, you know, they've taken the, the stuff right out of there, and they might find one billionth of a part of a trace or whatever like that. Um, and I can't remember something else I was going to talk about. No, anyhow, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, I mean, unless Jamie, unless you know some other, I have some other idea on how you would do it. No, stripping the infield would be the only way I'm aware of is to it, put you'd a. Still, it, even if you yeah. strip the infield, you'd still need um, a turf mount because the mount has yeah. to be removable. Yeah, right. Does the committee have any other comments or questions that they have for the gentleman? Yes, I do, and, and I apologize for being late. I had a dilemma at work. I lost my key fob. <laughs> so, um, so this infield now is this, is the mound higher for a, a baseball mound than than a than a, than a softball mound? So the There's different heights here. Yeah, so uh, the women's fast pitch mound is flat on the ground. Okay. So the actual baseball mound is. So there's going to be more maintenance in between games and stuff. Or, I mean, it's a gonna... portable mound, so yeah. it's one that comes in and out off the field for the. Oh, baseball. Okay. It rolls. Okay. It's like this. And and my other my other question would be is is uh, I have you know I have concerns about the um, this the historical uh, part of uh, of athletic park and and how that would dis it would would the turf disrupt that, and my my second thought being. You know, has anybody talked with the woodchucks? Are they okay with it? We are the woodchucks. This is the woodchucks. We are the woodchucks. Oh, you are the woodchucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, you know, and 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 um, yeah. you know, and, and I get that. I mean, I've I've owned the woodchucks now for twelve years, and and trust me, um, you know, I I I I'm the I'm the keeper of the wall. I mean, I've okay. I've, I'm the one who uh, who had yeah, and everything like that, and so it's um, believe me, I, I take that very seriously, um, and I don't think this is. Yeah, and and I and I've talked to a lot of the, you know, the the baseball purists around town, the people that are really into the game and everything like that, and um, and uh, and they and they're fine with it. Again, I think it's more of it's more of a realization that you know when you live this far north, it really does help. And I know what else I forgot. I'm sorry about it. It's the long term disposal. Yeah, and I agree. I mean, I, I know it's something we're concerned about. I think being a light user um, means that. It's 12 years out, maybe more, mm -hmm. um, and so I guess you know what happens in 12 years is, I mean, a lot of things can, a lot of the, a lot of technology changes a lot over 12 years, and and so I, I really, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I'm hoping that there's something, but I mean I'm thinking that that too. So in between, there's going to be very little disposal, um, and I think maybe in terms of the, the bigger picture. Um, it's probably, you know, there's a lot of trash that gets traded at, at Athletic Park, and there's a lot of things we can do out there that environmentally would help a lot. Um, but, yeah. Um, Lou, to add, so since you came in a little bit late, just wanted to let you know, this is a proposal from the Woodchucks because they're thinking of expanding to women's softball. And we did reach out to all the other users um, to see what their comments were, and that's in your packet of those email chain. Um, the ones that got back to me, which was the majority of them, we're in support of it. They know there's some changes that would come with it, um, but they would still be able to continue to play, and it would expand the uses. The I, other part, um, well, just I real quick, I wanted to add uh, for the historical piece of it. So I've been trying to do a ton of research on Athletic Park because I'm really trying to find out the history of Boilo Field, which I can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I found out some good information, though, that they were going to 
take it away a couple of years ago, so I think that it's not part of Athletic Park, but the Athletic Park parcel and what's in front, you know, what's on the screen here is this, this part of the field here um, is when it was given to the um, county or the city by the Wisconsin Valley Improvement Company in 1919, I think it was, um, said it had to be for athletic purposes. It doesn't say baseball purposes. It doesn't say softball. It doesn't say soccer or whatever. It says athletic purposes. So it has to stay. It was, it's always been a baseball field. There's always been somewhat of a fence around it. Uh, I did a lot of research because there was questions about when the previous owner of the woodchucks, which was I think the Timbers or something, yep. even before that um, came, there was some questions about the the different uses of the park and going back since the city has had it, it has had a fence around it, um, and it just has to be for athletic purposes. If we change the if we bulldoze it and want to build something on it, we can't do it. Then it would revert back to Wisconsin Valley Improvement Company. But and when you think of athletic purposes, that could be any type of community athletics. Um, thank you, Ms. Polly. I, I just want you to know that that I'm all for it. I mean, I'm all, I, I, I think it's great for Wa Wausau. I, I think it's, uh, um, it's another, another way to attract tourism to Wausau. Um, I, but, I, but I share uh, Alder Lucan's concerns also, you know, so. Um, Thank you. Alder Lukens. Um, I guess one last thing. What, what I would really appreciate is um, I'm wondering if it would be possible to contact Melissa Johnson at Marathon County Solid Waste and ask about, like, just in, you know, a view on artificial turf, the waste, if that's possible. Like, yeah, because I too, I don't want to sound like I, I I'm very much, mm -hmm. I very much support this, but that's that's my concern, and I would be, you know, rather than just like speculation, I'm yeah. would really appreciate um, learning what they would, what Melissa Johnson in particular, um, her view on it since they work with that you know because that's where it would go right um, yeah um yeah actually one of the things too that you see happen a lot with turf and, and, and this is that when it's taken out of the baseball field it's given <coughs> to the city and they put it in medians they put it in places where they can't grill grass batting cages batting cages it's used all it's used in a lot of places mm -hmm. um and so there's it doesn't it doesn't necessarily have to go but it's probably lower traffic um and and unless where maybe maybe you know optics are not as important but yeah it doesn't know you know a lot of times when the turf comes out of a baseball field it does not go in the in the landfill you can go there's lots of things you can do with turf i mean we have we have turf in some of our mediums here in town already don't we we do on thomas street yes yes <laughs> Jamie, do we need a motion to move this forward to City Council? Yes, so what, because this is a change to, it's an improvement to the facility, um, what you're asking is the Park Committee to, if you approve it, to move it on to City Council, and then in the full the full approval will come from City Council in order for Mark to move forward, and then at that time is when we would, though, just determine if a developer's agreement um, is needed or an amendment to the current developer's agreement, and then uh, before any of this goes forward, we would get that um, use agreement underway, and that would most likely come back to you as well. Ms. Polly, then I will go ahead and make that motion to move this forward to City Council, and I'd like to hear what my colleagues there have to say about it. Okay, I have a motion from Alder Larson, and I'm looking for a second. Second by Watson. Uh, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Motion has been approved. Wait, and you, you have to ask any opposed. I'm sorry. Ask if any of our opposed. Did do you vote? I didn't hear her, so oh, you have to ask okay. both directions. Um, well, I would really like to find out more. I guess I'll vote yes for moving forward. But, um, yeah. We can get that information from solid waste now Melissa's retiring so I'll see if I can catch her before she retires but otherwise I'll talk to Dave too. yeah and, and, and one thing I should probably yeah. as a proviso for the group too so that you know I mean is that I I will be back here tomorrow night at economic development 
um, because we have to figure out the development agreement. And there's, I mean, there's some there's some problems and some I some problems right there were challenges yeah. challenges <laughs> and and you know and we're going to talk about them tomorrow night. Um, that actually may be a harder discussion. All right, then the motion's been approved to move forward this to City Council. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank I you appreciate too. all the information. Mm -hmm. all right. I'm going to move on to educational items. 5A in your packet talks about park updates. Snowmaking has started at Sylvan Tubing Hill. If the temperature cooperates for the continuation of snowmaking, we hope to be open by December 16th. Holiday trees are up downtown. City Hall would be up as soon as the city staff installs a stand. And if that's the tree out in the lobby, it's beautiful. Yo, no, that's not us. <laughs> We're outdoors. You're outdoors, okay. Then I have not seen it. <laughs> New playground surfacing has been installed at River Highlands and Westview Terrace. Prep work is complete for the video board installation next spring at Atlantic Park. And a memorial bench is completed and was put at Fern Island. I'm going to turn 5B, Riverside Park Remediation Update, over to Jamie. Um, thank you. This is a lot of this information you've already received in an email um, that Mr. Killian had sent out that he had received from the Public Works Director. So I was just forwarding this on and then I did get additional information from the Public Works Director just kind of on the next steps. Um, but basically it's the same that in your packet um, and in that email you received the determination letter from the Solid Waste um, Department on the what needs to be done with the hazardous material and they are you know looking at a couple of more test sites I believe those may have been done already or they were supposed to have been done already on the 23rd um, and we're just waiting on those results once they get those results back then they'll actually be able to delineate how far it's been they're hoping that with what they did with those last couple of samples that they've got to the edges of what that um, area that needs to be um, kind of re-excavated and cleaned up is. So hopefully there's no more that has to come back. But once that comes back, um, it looks like January or February, well, they'd like to go out for a bid for it. So before that, we should see that map of that remediation plan and that plan coming forward. So I'll keep in touch with the Public Works Director and we'll keep that information out to you. Good. I'll take 5C, the native planting project on Barker Stewart Island. Marathon County Conservation Planning and Zoning Department has received a Wisconsin DNR Lakes grant to assist in shoreland restoration efforts on Barker <coughs> Stewart Island. A shoreland restoration project began in 2019 <coughs> and will continue in another area in 2023. Attached in your uh, packet is a copy of the proposal as well as a map showing the restoration area. Staff will work with CBC on this small area in 2023. In the future, if the project becomes larger in scope, a separate proposal may be brought to the Parks and Recreation Committee for review. Then I'm going to ask if there's any future uh, agenda items that you would like placed. I see none. Then we get to number seven, next meeting update, which needs to be determined by the committee since it would fall on, I believe, January 2nd, and I don't think too many people want to be here January 2nd. That's too close to New Year's Day. So I'm looking for some information or comments, or if you would just prefer to skip the January meeting and do double work in February. Any comments? I don't have a problem with January 2nd. I mean, that's... Well, that's a closed holiday it's a, it's for the closed. city hall. It's a, yeah. oh, because okay. the holiday actually falls on Sunday. Yep. Monday is the actual holiday, so so that's why where we come. We can either meet. I put in a couple of oh, options. Yeah. We could meet on the third at four o'clock prior to the economic development committee, or we could meet at five um, on the Monday, or which begins at five. Sorry, or on the Monday, January 9th after at six, which would follow the human resources committee, that meets at four thirty. Um, at this point, I don't have any actionable items that I know of for you. Um, I think if something were to come up. You know, I would let you know that I definitely need a meeting, but at the moment I don't have anything that I know that's that's pressing. Madam Chair, or yes, should we just cancel the meeting then and if something comes up, Miss Polly can schedule a meeting or that's up for discussion, yeah. Alder Lukens. Is there a park commission meeting in January? Yes, that's on the third. 
Okay, so do, there doesn't have to be a, this committee meeting before that? No. Okay. They're different. They're completely separate. Yeah, yeah. I know, but yeah. I didn't. And I may not even have a park commission meeting. It's scheduled for the third, so it mm -hmm. falls on a day where we are at work, but I don't have any actionable items for the commission either at this point. So would the committee prefer to select a different date? What are your thoughts? Or should we leave it up to Ms. Polly? If you don't have anything actionable, we could just, I mean, I'm fine with just waiting until February. I can't hear you. Sorry. Um, if there's nothing, if there are no actionable items, I would be okay with waiting until February. But I'm okay with if someone else wants a meeting, I can do that too, either way. You can choose to cancel the January meeting. I agree with you, February. Alder Lukens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alder Watson. At this point, I feel too that we will just cancel the January meeting and take everything into February. Maybe we'll have more on the agenda at that time. And not in order with that, but if you would happen to come up with some things between now and then that you'd like on the agenda for February, that would be great. Yeah. So if we okay. could make a motion for that, that would be good. And then. then we'll okay. All right, I will make the motion that uh, we cancel the uh, January meeting and unless there's some actionable items that needs to be reviewed and um, our next scheduled meeting will be in February, first I'll, Monday in February. I'll take that motion, Alder Larson. I'm looking for a second. Second by Alder Lukens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion is passed and um, the last one I will have will be a motion to adjourn the Park and Rec Committee meeting. Motion by Watson, second by Lukens. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed, meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.